Some people pronounce it Ryu. Some people say it's actually Dew. I say Ryu. If you can't deal with that, cut off the video right now. Hey Extreme Team, here with another high-end collectible. It is not a brand new collectible, but I wanted to do a video on this Prototype Z Ryu statue, Ryu statue, Dew statue, because I actually have a replacement coming in. So today we're going to do an in-depth review on this guy. We're going to talk about the different Street Fighter statue options. That's right, because that's who this guy is from. He's from probably my all-time favorite video game, other than the original Genghis Khan for Nintendo. Do you guys remember that? I'd stay up all night playing that. But I loved Street Fighter growing up. Not only in the arcade, but when it came out for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. And at that time, I was almost unbeatable. And I still play every once in a while on my MAME arcade machine right over there. And about a year ago, I foolishly thought I could take on Gem Mint in New York. Usually when I beat people, I have a perfect victory. So we were at a barcade in New York City, and I took on Gem Mint. Yeah, I think he got two perfects against me. Moral of the story, don't take Gem on in video games. But as I said, this is officially by Prototype Z, which is a company that doesn't do a lot of different statues. However, they do have a number of Street Fighter pieces. And this is one for scale, meaning it's been condensed down four times smaller than what he would be in real life. And I purchased him a while ago. When I purchased him, there were only two options for one fourth scale Ryu statues, or Ryu statues, or Dew statues. But it was this piece right here, or this older piece by PCS or Pop Culture Shock Toys. And I went with him because I think the sculpt and paint is much better. I like the base. It's, it has a little bit more to it other than that plain black base. But since then, there's been quite a few other statues. First is this one-third scale by Pop Culture Shock Toys. And I actually own one of the variant versions of this. They also have a new one-fourth scale. I don't even know if it's out yet, but here's a picture right here. And then a one-sixth scale version. But I'm actually trading him up for the one by Prime One Studios. Check this out right here. I think this looks amazing. I think it ships very, very soon. Cannot wait to add him to my Street Fighter collection. I have about 10 Street Fighter pieces right behind the camera, actually, next to my MAME arcade. Before I trade up with him, and hell, I might keep both of them, although he was not my favorite character. Ken was always my favorite character, which if you've played Street Fighter before, you know that they have a lot of similar moves. And today I didn't put the turntable up here because it was kind of overpowering and I wanted to more focus on the statue itself. But before we dive into the extreme review, we're doing a statue giveaway. That's right, at 15,000 subs, we are actually giving away a free statue. All you have to do is like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and put a comment down below. We're going to pick a random video and a random comment, and that person will be the winner of the statue. Now it's slightly possible that announcement hasn't been made yet because I'm filming stuff way in advance. We may not yet have given away that Baraka statue, which case in point, you still have to make sure you're subscribed to get that. And if we already did give it away, I just wasted 20 seconds of your time. Now let's start with the extreme review while we talk about concept with this piece. And design's going to play a little bit into concept, so we'll follow it up with design as there's some switch out options. What I really liked about this guy was the pose, which ties into the concept, so let's check it out. Starting at the base, you have what you would assume would be like a dojo or obviously a level that he's fighting on. It has uh, kind of some Asian influence on the outside with these different symbols. And then this bamboo type wood floor that looks fantastic. And he's in a fighting pose. And one of the things you're going to see all over him, he has a little bit of damage. So you see some like welts on his feet, but moving up fully sculpted and his uniform isn't clean. So there's some dirt going on there. He's in the midst of battle. And his robes are kind of flowing, maybe a little bit of wind going on like there is in the game. Same thing with his belt. And the, and the torso you see here, because there's a switch out torso, is what they call the battle damage torso. So he is doing the Hadouken. Essentially, he's about to throw a fireball, it appears. And he just looks not only beat up, but pissed as hell. And I really remember that I like this switch out torso much better. I kept the other one in the box because I know I never display it. I think it captures the character perfect. This is kind of his fighting pose right before they say fight on the game. He's kind of sitting there waving in the wind like this. So it's spot on. I like what they did with the base. I think the only thing what they're missing conceptually is what Prime One Studios did is, is actually having that Hadouken or that Fireball somewhere in there. 
So, but otherwise, I think it's a great representation of the character. I like the fact that even though it's a design thing, they, they have different switch out torsos, so he could be uh, bloody or clean. And another interesting fact, they actually made two versions of these. One is this guy, and, and the other is kind of the evil Ryu, or the variant player. Uh, so that's what they've done. They've made Ryu, they've made Akuma, they've made a new Ken that's actually coming out that looks fantastic, and a few different versions of Akuma, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I think the concept's a four out of five. It's everything you would want in a Ryu statue. It's everything you would want in a Ryu statue. Now for design, let's do the dimensions really quick. So quarter scale, he doesn't take up a lot of room, which is great. Uh, it's a little about 10 and a half inches wide. And then the depth, including these little parts that come out, you're about eight and a quarter inches. And then he's only about 17 inches tall. So that's great. He doesn't take up a lot of room. And now let's look at the different torsos. So here's the uh, bloodied and bruised one, which I really like. And then here's a stock photo of the other one because I kept it in the box. And I can't remember, maybe someone can comment below, there might have been another bus display. I can't remember if that was the case or not. I feel like there was. It's great they went completely sculpted with everything, no fabric slash mixed media, so that's fantastic. So the design's very simplistic, but I don't think it needs to be complicated. So I'd also give this a 4 out of 5 on the design as well. Now we're going to dive into paint and sculpt, and this is why I went with this piece. This was not only uh, painted very well, but it was sculpted by the great Eric Sosa, who I have a few other pieces that he's done. And uh, I'm just really impressed, especially sitting here re-reviewing it. I don't even know if I'll sell it. But I think what I'll do, I'll do a video review on the paint and sculpt, so let's jump to that. So typically, I usually do the video review with more complex statues, but there's something about this I just thought it'd be easier to verbalize like this. Starting at the base, the top, like I said, it looks like a real bamboo floor, like you would see in a dojo or a uh, fighting arena. I really like that. The paint on it is fantastic. Kind of the grain that's going back and forth. Uh, then it has these light uh, and dark browns. And then even the outside of the base, like I said, kind of has those Asian elements in it. And there's a little bit of shadowing in the gray. <clears throat> My voice, I must have the Rona. And take a look at his feet. So in the game, his feet were uh, oversized, and that's definitely the case here. So I think they did a great job with that. The toenails even look like real toenails. A little bit of a shine, I like how they're cut. But what's really impressive, you'll see this all over the skin tone. So the different, uh, flesh tones, and then look at the veins. The paint on those veins is just crazy. And then, as I talked about, it almost looks like he has some welts. So very, very impressive. And as you move up to his pants, you have all this dirt uh, that's uh, faded into that white color. It's kind of an off-white, so you can definitely tell he's been fighting. That's kind of like why I like the Battle Damage version better. And there are these baggy Aladdin-type pants with tons of folds. Just really impressive. And then you have his gi up here and a lot of the same stuff going on. It's a different texturized pattern. It's not the same texture that you see in the pants. And I appreciate that. Check out his belt. Very, very cool here. Like I said, everything's sculpted, although this does look like mixed media. Just a very impressive piece on both the paint and the sculpt. So here's some more shots of his gi, kind of how his arms are, uh, they're not really torn. It's not like these were ripped off in a fight because there would be more threads, but this is his same outfit. And there's a lot more uh, weathering up here. I can't recall on the other torso if it's, if it's uh, this shaded in. Then his arms, first of all, a lot of the same stuff we saw going on with his feet but you have some fantastic anatomy in here as well. You can see the bones and the muscles and then the uh, veins, not only uh, sculpted, but painted in there. Those different flesh tones are fantastic. Again, great job on his nails and his fingers. And then even the wraps around his uh, fists. I, I like this, it really varies the color. These boxing pads. See some more stuff on his chest, uh, those different flesh tones, and how red it is really makes you uh, think, you know, he's in the middle of a battle, he's getting beat up, but not as much as his portrait. Check this out. So he's got a huge welt, welted black eye, and then you can see they have uh, this sweat effect all over, this glistening sweat effect. 
Not a huge fan of how big his nose is, but that's about it. And then the blood I think is subtle enough. Not too much, not too little. I like that they added that. Then his bandana, very similar to his uh, gloves. His hair looks good. Uh, they could have used a little more definition in the strands than it's a cross between the uh, black and brown. But overall, this is just an amazing looking piece. When I started this review, I uh, was starting it because I was gonna sell it, but man, sometimes less is more. Sometimes it's not. It's just really well done. Like I said, I think the one thing that Prime 1 will beat is just it's so much more uh, dynamic and action and shows more of his power. This is more of a simplistic. We were never really talked about it. This is kind of a museum pose, although there is a little bit of action to it. But first, the only thing I don't like is his elongated nose. That's really the only negative um, in the entire sculpt. Otherwise, everything else is done really, really well. Uh, some of the features I talked about. So I think the sculpt's also a four out of five on this piece. You know, I can't remember, <clears throat> I was looking up information on this for the review because I bought this probably three or four years ago and I haven't even really looked at it that closely since then, but uh, he's selling for like 650. I don't remember paying that much, but I can definitely see why. Something else we forgot too is the edition size is actually 400. So they made 400 of these and I think they're still available on Proto Type Z's website. So paint, I think the paint is, ph is phenomenal like we talked about. Some of those skin tones and just, the everything everything on here looks phenomenal i think they did a really good job i think the paint's actually a five out of five and now i'm almost certain that i actually probably won't sell this so we're not going to talk about value because he is an older piece even though he's available for retail uh let's go jump into just the overall x factor does this have the x factor is it a five out of five statue i don't think it is you know it's pretty simple which sometimes less is more which that is the case here but it doesn't take this as to almost a grail status by any means I do think it's the best Ryu actually out there because Prime One Studios hasn't been released. So we'll definitely do an Extrumble, which is an extreme rumble where we compare the two pieces once that comes in. And uh, I might even find out that I like this one better. But I'm gonna give this a four out of five. I'm shocked this is still available. I'm shocked more people don't fiend over this because I am really loving it. The paint, the sculpt, the simplicity, the concept is everything you would want out of this character. But thanks for tuning in guys, especially for something different like this. I really do appreciate it. But uh, make sure you've hit that Mr. X logo to subscribe and check out some of these other statue reviews. And I will talk to you tomorrow. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Take care.